Okay, so even if this is the first time you see a high C map, you can observe clear patterns, right? So what, what you see here, you can see clear triangles, right? So this is actually back then when I was still a postdoc in Bing's group, we spent a lot of time trying to uh, write computer algorithms to identify such triangles in a genome. I, can see, I think since our paper published in Nature 2012, so far there has been at least more than 20 to 30 different uh, algorithms to identify the accurate locations for such triangles. Right? Sometimes you can see there's a big triangle and there's a smaller triangle, they call these uh, subtags. Right? So what do we mean by tags? What we think as a potentially each tag it's potentially, this is your DNA, it's potentially one of these hairball-like structure. So within each task, the genomes are more frequently uh, contacting each other, right? So this is another task. So you can see these two hairballs that are spatially separate from each other, right? Therefore, potentially there's a important biological uh, indications when you form a task, okay? So how do we identify tags? Again, as I mentioned, so far there has been many, many uh, tags identifying algorithms. Uh, maybe if you're interested, you can also write uh, your own. Right? But uh, in this lecture, I'll just briefly introduce the, the uh, algorithm back then we developed. I think it's still commonly used uh, in this field. Okay. Uh, so this is what we call a directionality index. <laughs> I think uh, potentially in your homework, uh, I think it's part of your homework. All right. So again, uh, because we uh, cut the human genome into different bins of the equal size, right? suppose you have 100 reads, right? because we are talking about a pair and the reads. By expectation, you would expect, if this is y and reads, this is a, a bin, you expect the other side of the uh, reads, half of them will go upstream, half of them will go downstream. So roughly your expectation will be 50, 50. Right. But what we observe in the high C real, you know, in a real high C map, we sometimes we see like 90% of the reads or even a big portion of them, majority of the, 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 the other end of the reads will be aligned to downstream rather than they'll go to upstream. So that means there's actually bias. So this part of the genome, they tend to interact with the downstream rather than upstream, right? I hope we are clear on this point. And then you can, we can actually uh, compute a, uh, a, simply put, you can just construct a two by two values, right? You're expected over observed. And then you can compute a P value for each bin. In this case, each bar is a one bin. Uh, you can compute this probability, a tend to interact with downstream or upstream, right? So the beauty for this works actually once you align this uh, directional index. So this is downstream, this is upstream you can see they align really perfectly with the triangle, right? And the conceptually, this is also very simple. You just have the uh, interaction bias, and then you can just write a, a HMM model to call the task, right? So this is what we did back then, and uh, this is what you will do uh, in this week's uh, homework. Right. So one surprising uh, discovery we made back then, and the key people keep making a similar observation is actually the task, they are really, uh, stable in different uh, cell types, right? It's quite a surprising. So again, in this case, there's uh, five different cell types, stem cell and the different cell lineage differentiated from the cell, stem cell. And uh, you can see this is uh, the high C signals, right? You can hardly tell the difference for the high C map from top to the bottom track, right? Big triangle, smaller triangle, big triangle, big triangle. And later on, uh, in one of the work um, in 2016 uh, from Bingham's group, they even showed the tests across 20 different human tissues. Again, test annotation is relatively uh, uh, stable, quite surprising. This just gave you a more uh, quantitative view, right? So before, in the previous slides, we just gave you the raw high C signals. And um, this is uh, the directionality index. So you can see surprisingly, the transition between ties it's really sharp and conserved. This is a big task we have seen in the previous slide. This is a small task, small task, right? Quite surprising. So you may ask, task is so conserved in different uh, cell types and they might have some uh, uh, potential functions, right? So we will talk about their functions later. So another idea is actually, since they are conserved in different cell types, how to have a species. 
so the, in the same paper, uh, we compare the PAS annotation between human and mouse. Okay, so this is a syntactic region uh, between a uh, human and mouse. Okay? In this case, you can see this is CCDC forty one, uh, CCDC forty one, right, and then BTG one, BTG one. So they are really syntactic regions. In this region, you can see there are four big tags, right? So they are really conserved between uh, different between human and mouse. Actually, we also published a paper in Nature um, last year as well. There are certain regions you can even link the conserved tag between human to zebrafish, despite hundreds of millions of years of evolution. All right, it's quite surprising. Okay. So types are important. What's the uh, potential uh, phenotype if you disrupt them? So this is actually the discovery uh, from Manovitz group uh, in cell 2015. So they actually have that this group, Manovitz group have published a multiple really, really great paper on the uh, function for tags, right? So this is just one of them. In the top panel, again, you can see this is a tag annotated in human genome. There are three big ones in this region. Uh, surrounded, there's a PAC3 gene and an EPHA4, right? So you can see what they, what they observe actually when there's actually a deletion or inversion or the duplication. So all different type of uh, uh, structural variations, they all disrupted the TAD boundary. So as a result, uh, the TAD structure is disrupted. So there's a severe phenotype you can see in human uh, uh, biology. So when they performed uh, experiment in the mouse, they were able to uh, recapitulate uh, the human disease in the mouse as well, further to confirm the importance uh, of the uh, uh, tags. Okay. Again, so this is a very nice uh, review written by my uh, former lab mate, uh, Dick, Jesse Dixon. So in this uh, review, they essentially go over a lot of uh, publications. So these are the potential functions uh, for tags, right? Um, in the first scenario, potentially the genes located in the same uh, uh, task, they, they are potentially co-regulated. And the idea is that the, because the hands are located in the same task, they can regulate the same set of genes because they are spatial uh, proximity. Uh, similarly, if a enhancer is located in type two, then it's very hard for this enhancer to get out of this uh, hairball and regulate uh, a gene uh, located in, in the other task. Right. And then only in human disease, we begin to see when the tag boundary is deleted, enhancers can regulate wrong target genes. So this is uh, the so-called enhancer uh, hijacking. So the other idea is that there's a, the tag boundaries can further uh, stop the uh, expansion of, re, uh, of the uh, repressive uh, uh, chromatins or the spread of transcription as well. So again, you can see the tight boundary is really just as a boundary to stop the, uh, the expansion of either repression or active gene transcription. 